you, you, you slime, you ingrate, you ruined my souffle. That was my neighbor Pierre. We had a little culinary mishap, but one good thing that came out of it was this tutorial. It's time for some text covered in green stuff. So let's see how this thing works. This is still live editable type, which is fantastic. So you could do whatever you want with it. And if you don't like the way that your slime looks, it is also still live, still editable. You just need to find its layer. And uh, with the uh, node tool, we can come in here. Maybe this drip is a little too long for this spot. You can come in here and make some changes to that. And you'll, you'll see that this is a little bit processor intensive, at least for my old computer. Um, but it's really not that bad, especially considering we got uh, this, this nice looking text that we can change and, and edit and squash it if we want to. So let's see how this whole thing works. And a little side note is some of these require a lot of fiddling around with the effects. So I might fast forward through parts that are mundane and I will start a new document file new. I probably should use that control N shortcut, but 1920 by 1080 at 72 DPI is what I am working with. That should do us good. And uh, we're going with the artistic text tool because we are slime artists. So I'm gonna center this and I'm also gonna double click this here just so I could see what I'm typing a little bit better and I'll find the middle. And this is not a font that will look good. So I'm gonna click my arrow and then I could easily change the font and look at my list. This Arco font is uh, free from defont.com. And I'm gonna make this bigger and I'm gonna hold down, not shift, sorry, control, so that it scales from the center. And now we got a nice slimy text in there. And uh, let's give this a color. So I select it and then I'll make sure this is forwards and uh, find this color here, maybe a little bit purpler and darker will work. Okay, so I wanna make this into a symbol and then start making my slime. So I go to view and I go to studio and I go to symbols and then just make sure the text is selected and you hit create and we're good with that for now. All right, so I'm gonna make the slime with the, with the pencil tool and a couple things that I wanna do is I wanna turn on the stabilizer and the, the longer this number is, the uh, more stable your uh, stroke will be, but the, the less control you'll have over details. I also want sculpt mode turned on, and let's actually see what all this stuff does. So I'll start drawing here, and we could see that we're getting a stabilized line based on that little red in between um, line. Uh, and if I want it more stabilized, I just make this number larger and with this sculpt turned on you'll see this this last point is red and uh, I can continue drawing an unbroken line when this sculpt mode is on and I'm using the pencil tool so if I just mouse over that and start dragging again you'll see that and if I let go you'll see we've got a uh, continuous line and if you don't believe me another good shortcut is hold down control this is just like other vector drawing programs. You could hold on control and temporarily get your node mover tool. You could even uh, make adjustments to this. And I'm holding down control each time I click a different point and I'm still holding down control as I get the handle. So this is nice. You can make edits on the fly. And then because the sculpt mode is turned on, I could just continue drawing my shape out here. And you probably want to add some variation so things don't get too boring. Some longer ones, some thicker and thinner ones and you probably don't want to do this forever. So what I'm going to do is just cheat here a little bit and I'm going to come back to um, this end over here. And the sculpt mode, to my knowledge, does not connect to the beginning point. So it connects to the last one. And actually I'm going to hold on control because I'm right here and I'm going to make a change. Um, so like I was saying, it doesn't connect to the beginning point but it's really easy to connect. Just get your node tool, drag one point to the other, 
and magically delicious it is connected and uh, it's not the handle that i want so i'll just hit this button here and now i've got nice smooth curve and uh, i've got some slime and let's um let's just flip these colors here so we got a fill with no stroke and uh, i'll just alt drag this and maybe uh, let's scale it so it doesn't look too repetitive uh, Something like that. I, I could fix this later or I could just leave it, but select these two shapes and this button up here will unite them together. And uh, if I want to clean this up, I could just click this one and hit delete. Click this one, hit delete. Click this one, bring it down and I'm going to convert it. And um, I might even delete these two here and uh, just make my adjustments. And if you want it to look a little bit more unique, you could start to make some changes in here so it doesn't look like we just mirrored it like we did. All right, so, and also maybe um, select this one, delete it, delete it, and this one, delete it. Okay, so we got slime. We don't want black slime. Well, you might want black slime. That's really up to you but I want uh, the, I'm a traditionalist, so I'm gonna go with the, the green slime and uh, I'm just gonna put it over the text. Let's just move both of these down a bit there. And um, yeah, so maybe it's not the most beautiful looking, but I'm gonna go with that. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is we gotta create some clipping here. So I'm gonna drag this down and you can see okay that's going to put it behind but if i move my uh, cursor over here you can see uh, we've got it clipping but it's going the wrong way so i know because of that i just want my curve to be on the bottom now i'll take my slime layer drag it get this okay so this is what i want make sure that line is vertical to the right of the um icon there and we've got our clipping mask and uh, now I just want to bring my slime out again so I'm going to click and drag and um, it snaps pretty nicely so that works out well and uh, yeah so this is the, the basic setup the the rest is um, fiddling around so let's um, Let's fiddle around. And um, I've, got, I've got sync turned on, so that way if I just wanna check this here, if I hit the type tool, I've got the, um, the background object here of the text changing and the, the one used in this clipping mask is also changing. So that is good. And now that I got that, I definitely wanna save. Uh, I would wanna save. And if I was you, and then I would come in here, turn off sync and start messing around. So this is the part we're probably gonna fast forward, but I will take a look at some of the, uh, some of the main effects, effects that I used. So uh, let's pop this window out here so that we could see everything. I'll actually just go to appearance so that we got a little cleaner background and go to layers. So I'll start off with the, uh, the background type and um, the um, things I'll look at is 3D and I'll click on my little cog here so that I get my effects window. And um, for this, I want to, let's bring the radius up. And uh, I think I probably would recommend using a, a profile here and this one works pretty good for 3D and I can make some slight adjustments, but I probably want to keep it pretty similar. And uh, another thing is I could separate the, the radius and the depth and you could see that gives you a little bit more control. The depth will kind of push it out and the radius will, it kind of enlarges the overall effect. So, get a little extra control 
And to make this more interesting, what I did was use multiple light sources. And, and, and I changed a bunch of settings in here, but multiple light sources is helpful. So I click add and then light number two, if you bring it towards the bottom, you could see you, you get some of this underneath lighting and uh, you could add a few of these. So this gives you a little bit more control. If you find your light is too bright, you can come in here and uh, reduce the intensity or you could also add a color if you want to your light. So you, you have a lot of control and then you might want to come in here to your, your profile as you have more lights, you could kind of see a little bit more what's going on and making these adjustments in here might work out better. And then if it's too sharp, you could always add a little bit of a softening and uh, yeah, so it's it's a lot it's a lot of that and um, and uh, let's fast forward through a bunch of this stuff. Okay, so I've got some um, three-dimensionality to the, the text. I definitely could fiddle around with this some more, but now let's take a look at the, um, the slime here. So we've got, we got this slime, and if, if we look at it here, we can take a look at the, um, the effects for that layer. And uh, so I'll start off by going to the 3D, making it bigger, and uh, I would unlink these two and see what kind of results I could get from that. But I just want kind of a soft, I don't want it to be too soft where I can't see the detail, but I don't want it to ever have any real flatness to it. So I just got to find the balance between those. Uh, this one, it's important to have stuff like, um, you're going to want a shadow on it. And let's just uh, make the shadow go straight down and uh, turn on the offset. So the shadow is going to be important. You don't want it to go too far because then you're going to get stuff breaking apart like that. And, uh, and you want it to be pretty subtle. Also, uh, it's important to click the eyedropper tool, click and drag to get that maybe like a purple, a dark purple in here. And then once you've sampled that color, you have to click on the swatch here. And I have that. So your shadow is somewhat matching the color. And then uh, let's see see here the, uh, the radius. So we want to increase that to soften it up. And, um, and then you, you just do um, similar things like the that were done with the fast forwarding um, inner glow, outer glow, stuff like that is going to help out and picking a color. Let's pick a color from like this brighter magenta and yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of getting, finding the colors that just look and feel right. And then going into adjusting the settings here, like the intensity. And um, also another important thing is for the 3D, we, we kind of have like the basic look, but uh, to get this to look better, I would add more lights. So we just have this one here, hit add, and we got another one. And all your other lights, I want them to be, um, well, now this is really kind of blowing things out. So. I'll, I want the lights to be at kind of a, a angle. So I'll drag the circle to the side and go around the edges until I find something that looks good. And if you're not sure what you're doing, it's going off the screen a bit, but you can pick a color for your light. You can also make the light darker 
and uh, I would I would come in here and start adjusting some settings like the uh, specular and the, uh, the shininess that's gonna help so as I bring these values down we're not getting as bright of a look so when I add when I add another light it won't just completely overexpose everything right away maybe I put one towards the bottom and I'll make it uh, a different color for this light actually the color is not having a huge effect but I just kind of go in and, and start building lights up like this I'll maybe add another one put it towards the bottom just kind of rotate around to see the, the angle that I want I might even want one towards the top like this and let's see if changing its color does anything yeah, it kind of has a little bit of an effect but you just adjust these sliders to to your liking liking and we could I don't think I want to soften it up because I kind of like that that hard edge in there and uh, yeah that that's pretty much it I could add a bevel and emboss as long as I um, I make it pretty subtle and you can see here we, we don't want to do anything that flattens it out it's starting to look a little flat when I go too far with it but uh, maybe we can use this to create a little bit of a, a rim lighting effect on top of the 3d stuff that we already did and um, yeah so it's it's just a lot of making edits and I'm gonna turn the sync back on and uh, cross our fingers and hope I didn't change anything that breaks the sync. So yeah, we've got 3D slime text that is still, if we click on this curve and go to our node tool, you can see it's still edible. Maybe I don't even like this. I can hit delete and get rid of that detail in there and change that to uh, whatever look that I want and yeah so this is definitely a fun one